Hi, and welcome to this tutorial which will explore parallel compression. This is an interesting technique with applications ranging from fattening up drum beats, in which context it's sometimes known as New York compression, to gently and transparently reducing the dynamic range of a symphony orchestra. Here we see an instance of Pro C inserted over a drum submix. I'll turn the threshold down well below the peak levels so that we're catching every drum hit with the compressor. And I can now control the amount of compression using the ratio knob. Let's turn it all the way up to create a hard limiter. The auto gain option is turned on at the top right of the interface. So Pro C is automatically applying makeup gain. But we can still adjust the level of the compressed signal using the output level knob below. Below that we find a dry mix knob. This allows us to mix in some of the uncompressed input signal as well. As you would expect, blending the dry and wet signals together tames the compression effect and makes it less extreme. But you may be wondering why you wouldn't simply turn down the ratio instead. I'll answer that question by using an analyzer to measure the compressor transfer curve. With no dry signal mixed in, the measured response is exactly the same as that on Pro C's own transfer graph, except that it also displays the makeup gain. Now notice what happens if I'm mixing some dry signal. This does indeed have the effect of reducing the overall compression ratio, but it also introduces a curve. Just above the threshold, we still have quite a high ratio. They're not quite a hard limiter setting anymore. But the ratio then reduces progressively as the levels increase, and the contribution from the compressed part of the signal chain becomes less and less significant. Going back to our drum bus example, this curve allows me to compress the middle of the dynamic range without squashing down too hard on the signal peaks. Backing off the attack time to about halfway helps to make the drums a bit punchier and hit a bit harder. While faster attack times will sound fatter. Proceed's auto gain mode is unusually intelligent and takes account of the attack time as well as just the threshold and ratio parameters. So you can experiment with different attack times without having to constantly adjust the output gain to compensate. Running a compressor in parallel will change the shape of its attack and release curves as well as its overall transfer. So the dynamic shaping effect will also be different. And it's worth experimenting with the three compressor styles on offer, as the style that worked best for conventional downwards compression might not be the best choice when running in parallel. However, there's more to this technique than New York-style drum shaping. Looking at the analyzer again, I've so far been bouncing my audio levels around the knee in the middle of the graph for maximum dynamic shaping effect. However, if the threshold is set lower, so that even very quiet signals are above the knee. What we've created is a type of upward compression, which boosts low level signals with a very gradual upward curve. I'll turn off auto gain and make sure both wet and dry signals are at unity. We now have a 6 dB volume boost for signals below the compressor threshold. While above the threshold, the curve trends ever closer to the diagonal unity line without ever quite reaching it. Interestingly, if I turn the ratio down, I can flatten out the curve to have a stronger effect on mid-level signals. So, using acoustic guitar as an example, let's start by turning the threshold all the way down. If it won't go low enough, open up the expert panel and boost the sidechain levels as well. Now the compressor's riding the signal all the time, so when I mix in the dry signal at Unity, we create our gentle upward compressor effect. And I can now change the depth of the compression by adjusting the amount of wet signal mixed in. The attack and release times are worth a mention. Release works much like a conventional compressor. Fast release times will produce a higher average signal level, but are more likely to pump audibly. So turn the release time up for gentler, more transparent settings. The attack time is less intuitive. With conventional compression, I might need to slow down the attack to avoid damaging the initial transients of the guitar part. But when running the compressor in parallel, the opposite applies. 
Setting the attack time as fast as possible means those initial transients will mostly come from the uncompressed part of the signal chain. So the compression will have the minimum effect on them. These kinds of settings, with medium ratio, fast attack and medium release, are useful whenever you need to bring up background details or reduce dynamic range with minimal side effects and are often used in classical orchestral recordings where any hint of audible compression would be unacceptable. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.